Our guest on this episode is a Nigerian actor, producer, and a businessman. He was born in Kano State, but hails from Imo State, Nigeria. He holds a degree in theatre and film studies from University of Just Plato State. He got his big break after he did a movie titled Seven Books of Moses and has since featured in over 100 movies. He's an activist and plays a major role under the umbrella of the Independence Nigerian Electoral Commission as a youth ambassador. Let's make welcome the successful actor and businessman, Michael Godson, Ifain Chupo, Thank popularly you. known as Mike Godson. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Nice Hi. Nice to have you on the show. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, how is COVID-19 treating you? I think that's like <laughs> national anthem first. <laughs> um, it's, it's been a crazy experience. I mean, to think that nobody saw it coming. Mm. Uh, but I believe uh, we'll find our way around it. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Has it affected you personally? Apart from work and everything, is it, is it evolving you in any way as a man? Uh, well, it's, it's, like I said, it's, it's a crazy experience. Uh, um, nobody saw it coming. Uh, to think that I'm an actor, mm. and um, Nollywood is a uh, big business. Uh, if you're not making money um, in business, you're out of business. Yeah. So for a while, nobody was working, nobody was filming, because uh, the pandemic actually affected every sector, uh, every uh, uh, revenue, mm. uh, you know, everywhere. So it's, it's crazy. But then again, I like to look at uh, the positive side of it, you know. Right. Um, it was a time for me to reflect on myself, connect with my family, connect, reconnect with God as well. And, uh, you know. The way you were smiling, I thought you were going to say your babe or something. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. God seems to be his babe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, oh, and we see that um, production has sort of resumed. Yeah. Um, so are you working on any at the moment? Uh, I just finished one, actually. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, what were the measures put in place to ensure that you're the not... Policing these people, though. You're not a... I'm, I'm, I'm ask, concerned. Ask, yeah. We are all in mm -hmm. the same space. Yeah, I can remember the producer checking uh, temperatures uh, of everybody uh, because mm -hmm. it takes bringing people together to make a film. So mm -hmm. so I, I think they, they, they actually took, uh, you know, certain measures to ensure that everybody's safe. Yeah. And speaking on this movie, I th from your social media, I think you kind of liked it because you were... This is, was... Looking through your page, I didn't really see you give that much details about the nature of the movie, but you seem to really dig this romance, right? If I'm if I'm wrong, why are you, is that how you are, like in person as well, like <laughs> Mr. Romance type of person, or is there something special to this? Oh well, I, I tell people that uh, you, you can't give what you don't have. All right, I mean, if you're good at something, it's going to show. Hmm. You don't have to talk about it. I mean, <laughs> Okay, so this is interesting. That's a brag. Okay, I like that. <laughs> Subtle mm. brag. I like it. I mm. like it. Excuse mm -hmm. me. So, um, as an actor, um, they know, I, I don't know. I think people understand you more as a businessman than even an actor. And you're actually mm. a successful actor as well. So, did you start business before acting or acting came after business? Well, um, the business part of my life, mm. I, I think uh, that's the part that don't make it to the media. I mean, mm. this is okay. actually my first time talking about it on camera. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so uh, I've, been a, I've been a businessman for two years. But then again, I've always wanted to do something outside the industry. Like I tell people, um, having understood the, the industry's demography and how things are you know, done, it's always very important to create other streams of income. Mm. Do you understand? You know, uh, I had an interview with this day, and uh, I, during my interview, I talked about uh, the industry and how it is not uh, it's not uh, strong enough to give you that financial security. But then again, it just provides for basic needs. Basic in needs. Your words. Every I don't get it twisted before people come <laughs> come for me. Mm -hmm. No, actors are very comfortable. Do you get? Uh, but I mean, but sometimes you want to leave above yeah. Sometimes mm -hmm. you just want to you know invest, do big things, you know, buy properties and all of that. I feel like you need um, other stream, mm -hmm. streams of income to actually help you uh, achieve that goal. Yeah. Mm. So as a man that's going into the industry, yeah. uh, based on based off what you've said, and they're having a family and they don't have any means of doubling the income for now, all they have is acting, would you hesitate to advise them to go, into, go for it? I mean, I always tell people that it's always uh, good to be smart. You know, um, Nollywood is a, is a beautiful platform to showcase your talent and monetize it at the same time. 
But then again, um, you also need to create other streams of income. You know, think about, think outside the box, think about other businesses you can do. I mean, let's talk about the pandemic. Uh, the pandemic is more like a wake up call for everyone. You know, a lot of people didn't see it coming and people who um, are solely dependent on um, the industry got hit badly. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, I mean, if you're an actor and that's the only stream, uh, that's the only way you make money, I mean, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. So I, I, I like to tell them that always try to do other things apart from, I mean, nobody has to know. Do you understand? But try to invest in other things so mm -hmm. that uh, you can always uh, strike a balance. Yeah. Let's talk about your role as a youth ambassador for INEC. I yeah. think that's an interesting role considering the country we live in. Right. And um, it's also interesting to know that we're already talking 2023 when we've not gotten the dividends of um, 2019. <laughs> right. But what does that role entail for you, especially as a youth ambassador and communicating with youth as well, seeing that they're actually really tired or not even interested in um, elections and politicking? What does that really Well, tell? I mean, we're all in this together. And sometimes I get tired as well, because uh, it's something to talk about, uh, uh, you know, the importance of uh, a non-violent election. is another thing to see you saying, oh, you're a, a youth ambassador, talk to your government to do things right. You know, but basically my job is just to reach out to the youths and uh, sensitize them, educate them, and tell them the importance of a nonviolent education um, um, uh, election. Basically, yeah. So that's that's what we do uh, alongside other ambassadors, not just myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as um, the part of making them understand their civic duty and getting them involved right. uh, is not is just for it to be nonviolent. That's is that it. Where you focus? N not on? really. Uh, I mean, every every individual must understand uh, the power in their votes. Mm -hmm. So it's not just talking about uh, the importance of uh, a non-violent mm -hmm. ele election. Mm -hmm. they, we also tell them that, okay, you have to identify a cre credible leader and uh, make do research about the person and vote for whoever you like. So. It's interesting that it's just a bit one-sided, that like you're focusing on the youth and you're not actually mediating on for the youth. I mean, on behalf of the youth to the other part, but I guess that's, that's a different... Um, I, I, I really don't like politics, mm -hmm. yeah, but even as uh, a youth ambassador, we're not allowed to um, support any party, mm. yeah, so we just, we just work with the commission basically, you know, do what uh, we're asked to do and that's it. Just sensitize people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Apart from INEC, uh, just to go a little back into, um, you know, the industry, right now something else that they're advocating for is not just uh, violence in elections, but violence against women, and yeah. and I wanted to touch a little bit in the of the in, in the industry, the entertainment industry, and the acting industry. It's very infamous for, you know, exploiting women and right. all that type of stuff. But away from that, I wanted to ask you, as a man in that industry, yeah. do you personally, your own personal experience now, do you see that happening around you, or do you know people who are perpetrating that and how is it being perpetrated? Are you talking about rape as a case study? Yeah, well, rape, um, sexual harassment, ex well, because you know, you can have physical tearing and right. violent, but like, do you see people are using their power to demand for, for rape, statutory rape? Oh, well, the thing is... <laughs> <laughs> Shake it's the a, table. It's a, it's a crazy topic, yeah, but the thing is, um, I've been around for a while and um, I've been very uh, observant, you know, we just hear people who come into the industry and they talk about, oh, I was sexually harassed by a director, mm. I was sexually harassed by a producer. But I also want to believe that anyone who um, decides to come into the industry is an adult. Do you understand? And they can actually take care of themselves. So um, I've never heard any issue of rape ever since I got into the industry as an actor. We hear of sexual harassment, but I haven't seen anyone who's a victim. Uh, not until a few weeks ago when he hit social media that a uh, director or producer sexually harassed somebody. Um, to think that I've actually worked with the guy before and he didn't strike me like someone who does, you know, something like that. You know, he's actually a very gentle person, like a gentleman. I've worked with him. He paid me handsomely well and, mm. you know. So you're a man? Mm. No, but no, no, I'm not. <laughs> if I was a woman, I'm sure the same thing would have happened. Okay. But, the th but, but the thing is, um, 
I was very, very disappointed when I heard about that. You know, okay. I, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, see it as something to be taken um, like, for granted. Yeah. You know, hmm. and secondly, rape is not just a crime; it's a heinous crime, and should be taken uh, very seriously. And I, I believe that uh, it's also beyond talking about it on social media. Mm. You know, I, I feel like certain or strong aggressive measures need to be put in place uh, to ensure that we curb, you know, rape as, as, uh, as a crime in this country. And if we don't use someone as a scapegoat, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's going to keep happening. Yeah. Uh, secondly, I believe that um, we're all, all in this together. Yeah. Um, not just uh, as grown-ups, not just as adults. We also have to educate our children, mm. um, you know, teach them sex sexual education. We need to also let them know that, listen, we need to understand uh, the importance of respecting a woman's body. Mm. Because I believe when you raise a child in the way he should grow up, when he grows up, he will never depart from it. So, uh, yeah, I feel like uh, we need to work collectively to, to make this yeah. happen, yeah. I think you've said enough, and unfortunately, we don't have more time to go on. But thank you for doing tea with us I appreciate at this time. It. You're welcome. And that's how I wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching, and you can join the conversation by sending your opinions via WhatsApp to 090-6005719 or tweet at us at Plus TV Africa. Remember, you can catch up on this episode and all our exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. Also, remember to watch Tea Time on R2 TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you, as always, to go to Michael Anchor if I my and our guest, Mike Gutson. Thank you for being thank here. Thank you, appreciate it. Thanks my for having me. My name remains Elsie Godwin. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa. Tea time. Please do stay safe.